I wanted to start with something when you um, you know began Bharat Biotech around 1996, if I'm not wrong. Um, what was the thing in your mind? You know, what was that driving force and that one agenda that you had? I had only one agenda: that India has to move forward in the biotechnology. That's only one agenda. That's how we coined the company name Bharat Biotech. And your vaccines. most of them even the typhoid which is given to children under 2 years so have been the safest have been counted amongst the safest vaccines so has it always been safety first when you are developing or designing a product or it's more of having a novel product and then i'll go for partnerships amongst these two which is your focus area i think my first agenda is always a safety you can have the best platform technology anywhere in the world doesn't matter because you are giving the vaccine to the healthy people that's the most fundamentally important whereas uh, antibiotics are all given to infected people that's okay cancer people infected they are giving a treatment but here you are giving to healthy people and uh, also children child the newborn babies and so most important the utmost important in the vaccine field is the safety if safety is taken care of the next comes is efficacy So look at for example in the FK when the pandemic time everybody was looking for the efficacy of the vaccine the moment uh, the pandemic is over now everybody is talking about the safety issue is scale uh, going to be more important in the coming years or will it be novel vaccines and novel plants no we, we, we are mostly innovative company we love to have uh, look at the the society problem take that problem into a research and, and clinical and development of a product that's how we got into chikungunya like typhoid conjugate the the child who gets a typhoid is a young child in this country so we took that project and i think we were the first innovators of that uh, typhoid conjugate vaccine in the world there is an interesting product i saw in your r&d pipeline which is a sars cov2 rabies vector can you elaborate a bit what kind of a vaccine would that be actually it's a new platform technology we completed phase 1 with the human uh, phase 1 preclinical human phase 1 all that even uh, animal child studies everything so we checked the platform where you are protected both rabies as well as covid together in that so the say using a rabies as a virus and you insert the your uh, covid in that gene as a s protein into the gene so it highly immunogenic highly effective and is also protecting other variant but we did a phase one but then the covid is over so we stopped the project uh, covid is over people are not very keen to you know take vaccines what is your opinion as a scientist that do people need to take uh, follow up vaccines every year and or uh, we need uh, a pan coronavirus vaccine uh, what is your take on that see the virus is more intelligent than human being it is changing its shape color everything is changing your lungs everything is changing so one has to be keep watching what is it it's a respiratory pathogen so respiratory pathogen can be more dangerous for the old people who has got a morbidity problem like heart problem and other problem diabetic and all those people are still be more predisposed for that but i really don't want people to be scared of this covid i want them to be healthy it's not that i want to be commercially exploit the weakness of the human being no we want them to be healthy but we are watching what is happening so our, my worry is if this virus goes to the animal and comes back in a different form that's going to be scary part what are the interesting uh, partnerships that you're having at this moment in r&d with uh, global uh, universities or labs uh, and what kind of products are you working on we are working on one of the see malaria now we work with the gsk and who and now the gsk is going to be i mean transferred entire technology to us now and we are now gearing up in another 6 uh, 8 months we will be into the malaria program into the field for the gavi and african market point of view and malaria and we are also looking at it uh, tuberculosis because prime minister's agenda how to eradicate tuberculosis in the country so we are one of the best vaccine probably in the world is the uh, bofrb and uh, Uh, the uh, Spain in uh, Spain company, uh, animal vaccine company in Spain. We are working with them 
they can already complete phase two. It's already entered phase three in South Africa. So we are working with them. During COVID, um, you had to invest a lot in research and development. Uh, did it require any kind of fundraising? We are the only company in the world have not taken a single dollar or rupee from the any government or any international agencies. Put our money so that we have moral right to help the community. As a you know, as a scientist, is my moral obligation to do my science, giving back to the country, and we did that co-vaccine. So we invested almost six hundred seven hundred crores on the project, and without looking at whether the returns will come or not, I was not. And any other areas where Krishna Ella wants to you know look into apart from vaccines, therapeutics, biologics. No, we're in the vac uh, veterinary vaccines because. Uh, uh, animals are very critical for the country because anybody who is surviving a farmer is only allied agriculture. The dairy, poultry is keeping the farmers alive. Even the crop fails, they are alive on the income on that. So I am looking at that aspect of it, how to build some innovation in that aspect of it. So we are working on FMD in Bangalore and Pune also. And uh, so we might become one of the largest veterinary vaccine manufacturers soon, globally also. How much is the investment required in the next five years for R&D, for new manufacturing capacities, for getting into new areas of research? If you can give a ballpark number. Not less than two, three to four thousand crores. Not less than three to four thousand crores. So this will come from your internal accruals or you will have to go for fundraising from no, PEs? We don't know yet, but we have internal reserve. We'll be putting that into the place. But uh, definitely... I don't think we need a more manufacturing facilities, but certainly a lot of clinical trial and product development partnership and how to execute the projects. And mostly the money is going to go a lot of clinical research. Would you be open to a listing in case fundraising requires uh, raising money from the public? I don't know. My family has to decide that. I'm enjoying as a scientist. <laughs> I'm enjoying my, as a scientist. Let me enjoy some more time. <laughs> So what are the challenges for Indian biotech companies, especially startups? Startups are in trouble in this country. Okay, They just want money, unfortunately. But they have drive, the vision, but they're all stuck. Because the regulatory little get complicated for them. See, we are at least now passed through all the stages. We can delay something six months. We don't bother. We just wait. No problem. But startups cannot lose six months. Today, many private equity would like to invest in life science. They are not able to invest because the regulatory system is very complicated in the country. I think if the startup has to survive in this country in life sciences, and I think we just need a US FDA model. Whatever US FDA model, let's copy, put it together. What is working? We'll equal it to that. Then life sciences in this country will survive, will succeed, will take a lead. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. She has ambitions of becoming a brand. Business Standard